in the last video in the series, we downloaded an image using async await and a lot of new keywords were thrown around, but we didn't really dive into those keywords. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to dive in to what is async, what is await, what are these keywords really doing? Because pretty much every single function that we're going to write is using at least one, if not both, of these keywords. So again, this is probably a relatively easy video. These We're gonna do a bunch of really, really simple examples. My hope here is just to get you guys really comfortable using these keywords because as they come up in the future, we're not gonna take the time to understand what that await is doing every single time. Instead, we're gonna cover it now so that we can move fast later. All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is going to be the easiest video by far in this playlist. Uh, and that's because before we get into the complex stuff, I just wanna dive a little bit deeper into the async and the await keywords. Uh, we've already used them, we covered them, but I really want to ingrain it into your brains uh, exactly what is happening when we are using these because uh, you gotta understand the foundations before we can understand uh, everything else. So let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It'll be a swift UI view and let's call it async await bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on that canvas. Let's get coding. All right, let's create our view model for this view. It's gonna be a class. We're gonna call it async await bootcamp view model. Conform to observable object, initialize one in our view at state object private var view model set it equal to an async await bootcamp view model this screen will be a list and we're going to loop on for each and of course we need something to loop on we're going to loop on an array of strings which we'll then want to use their hash value as the id so i'm going to look for this completion down here with the id uh, let's create that data model. So in our view model, let's create our at published var. Let's call it data array. It'll be a type, an array of string, and we'll set it equal to a blank array to start. Our data will be our view model dot data array. Our the ID is going to be the backslash dot self that references the hash value of each string. Strings are inherently hashable. And then our content, we'll click enter here. This will, just to be explicit, we'll say for um, maybe data in. Each piece of data is a string, so we will put on the screen text with that data. Cool, nothing fancy yet. In our view model, we're gonna keep this super simple and create a function that says add title one. What are we gonna do? We're gonna call self dot data array and we are going to append you guessed it title one so in this list we're going to call dot on appear we're going to call view model dot add title one let's click resume let's see if it works if it doesn't work i probably need a new job but it did work so we're good to go all right, so a lot of what we're gonna look at in this video is actually threads, multi-threading here. Uh, so next to this add title one, I'm gonna put maybe um, a colon and then a backslash um close parentheses and I'm gonna add the thread.current just to show you guys. So title one and the thread we can see is thread number one, which is the main thread. So we're on the main thread right now, which is exactly where we want to be. So my first question to you guys is, if we wanna add a delay to this function, if we wanna wait two seconds before appending this, how would we do that? So the answer is dispatch Q dot main dot async after, and the deadline will be now plus maybe two seconds, and then we can call our code in here. If we run it, we can say two seconds and then we will see that our title one comes through and it is still on the main thread. Let's create another function and call it add title two. And this time I want to do it on a background thread. So here we dispatch queue onto the main thread, but there are a bunch of other threads that we have learned about previously on this channel. Uh, so let's first go on to a background thread. We'll call dispatch queue dot global. And we can use the global with a quality of service if we want to specify, but I'm just going to call global for now. Call async 
I'm gonna call dot now plus two seconds and then we'll get our code inside. So, so we'll pretend here like we're doing some expensive task on the background thread. So I'm gonna say here, let's say let uh, title equals, let's call this one title two and we'll do the thread dot current which should be a global background thread. And then we want to come back onto the main thread to update our UI. So we will then dispatch Q. So we will then dispatch Q dot main dot async back onto the main thread and self dot data array dot append the title. Let's get rid of this. So coming down to our code here, we're gonna call view model to add title one and we're also gonna then call view model dot add title two. Let's resume this. Press play here and you're gonna see that uh, title one is coming through on the main thread Title two, where we have it right here, is coming through on thread number two. So you can see that number two, clearly not number one, not the main thread. Uh, we went onto a background thread, and then uh, here we came back onto the main thread. So if we then appended another title, so we can say let um, title three, we can call this title three, and we said self dot data array dot append title three we could then see uh, that the third title will be back on that main thread here. Awesome. But of course, this video is not about uh, dispatch queue, it's not about global, but it is about threading because that is something that is super important to keep in our mind when we are using async and await. Because prior to Swift Concurrency, we very explicitly had to go on to the global or background threads, and it's much less explicit when we're using async and await. So firstly, let's set this up for an asynchronous call, all right? So we are now not going to use these any longer, so I'm gonna comment them out of the code down here. Let's create another function and call it maybe add, um, add author. I just don't wanna call it title again, so we'll say add author one. So firstly, now we're gonna be doing this from an asynchronous environment. So in our onAppear, we're gonna jump onto a task, which we learned in the last video is how we get into an asynchronous environment, and then we can call viewmodel.addAuthor1. Uh, of course, we then want to be make this asynchronous. Because this is asynchronous, we then need to await that result. So we come down here with the word await. Now, what we're gonna do right now is just very simply say let let author uh, one equals, and I will say author one and a colon, and I'm gonna do the thread dot current. We'll then say self dot data array dot append author one. All right, I'm gonna click play here. I'm going to run the app one more time and we can see that we are actually on the main thread. Nick, I thought we were gonna be using background threads, and we are, but not yet. So I wanted to show you guys that just because we are in a task and using a wait and in an asynchronous environment does not necessarily mean that we are going to be on a different thread other than the main thread. Now it might mean that, and oftentimes it does, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. So that's something that we do need to understand before we can move forward. My next question is then, how do we add a delay into our asynchronous environment? Uh, so when we were up here, we used the dispatch queue, we used the dispatch queue, and then we async after. Uh, but as I mentioned in the last video, when we were using Swift concurrency and async and await, we no longer want to use dispatch queue.global. We instead want to do everything uh, in our asynchronous environment. Oftentimes that's using actors, oftentimes it's using the tasks that we are in. So in here we create a task and then we perform our functions uh, on that task. We can actually just basically add a delay to that task. And the way we do that is basically by putting the task to sleep for a second or however long you want. So what we're gonna do here is then add um, task. So we're referencing the task that we're in. We're gonna call dot sleep. We have a nanoseconds here. They deprecated the regular duration. I think it was actually easier to use. I guess they don't really want people using this maybe. Um, but let's add the nanoseconds here. And I think 
It's uh, a billion nanoseconds is one second. So let's do two seconds. So two, uh, and then we'll do an underscore zero, 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 zero. I think that will be two seconds. Uh, in Swift, you can use the underscore to represent like a comma. Uh, you don't need to, you can just put your zeros, but it's often easier to read it like that. This sleep function can throw errors. We're not gonna worry about them in this video, so let's just try and make it optional. Now, this is also an asynchronous function, so we need to await on it. After we do, after we sleep for two seconds, let's then say let author two, and it'll set it equal to, I'm gonna do the same thing I have up here, except make it author two, and call self dot data array dot append author two. Let's uh, build and run this one more time. Click play, one, two, and then we get our author two in here. And as you guys can see, author two is coming through on thread number three. And the big thing to point out here is that we didn't explicitly go onto a background thread and yet we somehow ended up on a background thread, right? And what really happened here is this function, this test.sleep, went onto a background thread, we awaited, and then we came back on that background thread and then went with the rest of our code. So if I take this uh, async await bootcamp, make it the first view in my app here and build it, you guys are gonna see we're gonna get that purple warning error back that we actually can't we're gonna get that purple warning error back yet again that uh, we are publishing changes or we are publishing changes from a background thread which is not allowed. So in async await to get back on to the main thread, we actually just jump back onto the main actor. Uh, and we can do that with uh, await main actor dot run and we'll put our code inside. I will then add another author down here. We'll say let author three and append author three. Let's call this author three. Just to show you guys that if I run this one more time, we are now getting our, um, we're jumping onto that background thread and then we're jumping back onto the main thread. So again, up here, we used to explicitly say we're going onto a background thread right now, but now we just await asynchronous tasks. Sometimes those asynchronous tasks will jump onto background threads, sometimes they will not. So for example, if I have another function here that says, um, you know, do something, and maybe it is asynchronous, and maybe we have some code here that just says, does something, right? Uh, and if I put that here instead of this sleep and I do something, we're still gonna await here, and uh, let's actually make it throws. And if I run this now, the exact same code other than this line of code, uh, and you're gonna see that we are always on the main thread. So just because we are awaiting something doesn't necessarily mean we are going onto a background thread, but it can mean that. Await is just a suspension point in the task. We are awaiting the return result, and, and it could be on a different thread, it could be on a different actor, it might not be. But from our perspective as the developer, it does not matter, right? All we know is that we are awaiting for that response. And since we're in an asynchronous environment, whenever we are done and we wanna get back out of the asynchronous environment, we will just await, switch back onto the main actor or whatever actor you wanna jump back onto uh, and then run your code. So it's it's often a good idea to, even if you're unsure on you know what thread you're going onto, just switch back onto that main thread before updating your UI. <clears throat> All right, uh, this do some things, obviously not doing anything. So let's get rid of that. Let's put our task back in here. I'm gonna actually, let's actually use this, this function. Instead of calling it do something, we'll say add something. <laughs> Why not? Uh, this will be an asynchronous function just like this one. We don't need to throw an error out of here. Uh, and in here, I'm going to uh, try await task.sleep. Let's sleep for another two seconds. And let's kind of do the same thing that we did here. We get um, where 
we uh, are getting something when we are on whatever that background thread is and then we're switching back to the main thread. I'm gonna call this, uh, let's call this something one, something one, and something two, something two. I feel like I'm Dr. Seuss. Uh, my jokes are not funny, I know. Um, something one, something two. And we're gonna call add something. I'm gonna call it down here. So we're gonna say uh, await, again, because this is asynchronous, we need to await on it and add something. I'm then going to play this in a second and you're gonna see that when the view appears, we run into task and we call await add author one. Now, add author one is going to, going to run this code in order. So as if it is synchronous, although we're in a synchronous environment, right? So. Uh, this code is going to execute from top to bottom, although it is asynchronous code. So here we're gonna do this. We're gonna then await two seconds, do all this, and then await add something. So then in here, we're gonna call await, wait two more seconds, add something one, and then add something two. So let's press play. And we can see that um, after two seconds, we get those, and then two more seconds, we get the somethings. So, so it is important to understand here that the logistics of this. So if I come down here, and maybe we're waiting on this add author one, but let's add, um, let's, but let's actually say let uh, final text equals final text, and then and let's then print out the thread current again. And we'll say view model dot data array dot append uh, final text. You're going to see as I run this uh, two seconds, two seconds, and the final text comes in all the way at the end, right? So uh, it might look to to someone without a keen eye who doesn't really understand uh, the await word. It might look like this line's going to run, then this line's going to run, then this line, and then this line, almost immediately. But really, this await keyword is saying, we have to wait. We're going to suspend the task at this time for it to complete. So here, add author one is gonna run, but this line of, these lines of code here aren't going to run until this is totally done. So in here, we have add author one, and then we have another call to add something else. And you know these could then chain and chain and call more functions. Uh, so when we are writing our code here, we really have no idea how long we are going to wait, but we know we may have to wait here, right? It could be immediate, it could be one hour, it could be 10 hours, we don't know. We just await, and whenever it's done, this will run. Another way of writing this is uh, maybe if I want, didn't want to chain these inside each other, so if I wanted to get rid of this add something from this function, uh, I could then call down here await view model dot add something. Now it's going to be more or less the exact same thing. This is going to run uh, after this completes. This is going to run after this completes. This is going to run. So it's still waiting in order here. You'll also probably notice that inside these functions we awaited and we called test dot sleep, and then we awaited and we called test dot sleep, and yet author two and something one. If you look at author two, second thread, something one, third thread. So even though they both called the same exact function, task.sleep, they went on to different threads. And it's yet just yet another uh, thing to point out when we're using these async await words that we're often going to be switching threads, uh, but we're not specifically saying go to this thread. Uh, all we need to know as the developer is that we are awaiting, it's a suspension point, we may be switching actors, we may be switching threads, there may be a lot of time, there may not be. Uh, all we need to know is that we need to await, and then being safe developers, we switch back onto the main actor before updating our UI. The final thing that I will point out here is this does not seem very efficient, having to wait for this to run before we can then run this. And oftentimes in your apps, you don't want to wait for one to finish before the other. Instead, you maybe want to execute two at the same time. Uh, and there actually are really easy ways to do that using async await, but that's going to be its own video in the future. So for now, I just want you guys to understand that uh, how these await keywords work, they're suspension points, we could be switching threads, we might not. 
we'll get into some of those advanced concurrent functions where you run multiple functions at once in a later video in this playlist. Uh, the next video though is gonna be super important. We're gonna cover this task keyword in detail. Uh, I've been using task now I think in the last video as well as this one uh, and we use it to get into the asynchronous environment but there's actually a lot going on with this task keyword and if that's something that you're interested in I will happily see you in the next video. So thank you for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking and I will see you in the next video.